The idea of this conference really is to bring different perspectives and um, hopefully create us an opportunity to have some conversation looking from these different perspectives. How does that inform us about the future? In what ways can we contribute and be proactive? Encouraging it to be a healthy and sustainable relationship that we share with the land um, in all of these different layers. Why do we need to transform urban planners into vision builders? Well, due to my applied researches, I realized, from the, as I said, from the point of view of social sciences, there might be some gaps in methodology of urban planning. I think that we, we, can, we can somehow improve uh, urban planning. Uh, this paper is therefore supposed to make you more sensitive to contextual thinking and the realities of others. And while doing so, um, I will try to make you more, more conscious about your responsibility um, of the future of the cities and uh, from the point of view of the people. What you have here is maybe the highest expression of those cultures who were still, as I would say, not separating the individual from its environment. I think a lot of the problems that we're facing today are that we're literally separating human beings. Uh, so I postulate, number one, we are not separated from the landscape. Actually, we are literally a product of the landscape. So what the sand painting does, it pays respect to that. Um, sand paintings are used for healing, both psychological and physical healing. Uh, Conrad is an artist who's really interested in landscape and he's also American, living in Prague for a couple of years. Now I can show you some things. This is a recent project that has more to do with social space and it's very simple. It's called Draw Me and essentially what I did was I went out into public places here and I set up a sign and an easel with some drawing materials and a sign that says uh, Draw Me, I pay you one crown a minute. And I just sat there and I waited for people to come and draw me and I counted the time and I paid them. I tried not to communicate with them, I tried to stay totally neutral. Um, and they made these portraits, and I find the portraits to be, I can really see myself in these portraits, every single one of them. What I'd like to briefly discuss is the critical ingredients in this transformation of taking Pittsburgh from a city that was totally dominated by industry. It was functionally an unlivable city. It was only to work. How did it transform from that condition into one of America's best cities. Rated many times as the best city to live in or one of the top five. Uh, so uh, the starting points uh, of every project that probably every urban designer or whatever is doing is you know like there's more and more people on this planet. There's more and more urban people on this planet. So there's more of us in cities, what are we going to do, you know? And then by building things, uh, you're basically taking away the natural layer of the city, what is there under it, and you are affecting the ecological processes of the city. So this is basically like, uh, you know, the planet has seen these changes, but we haven't, so we have to adapt. It is really everywhere and uh, anywhere outdoors, and it doesn't matter if we are in strictly urban conditions, as we are right now in Malostranske Namnesti, or if we are in rural conditions outside in the countryside, which we refer to as a landscape. And why do we all need that? Why do we need a profession? We need it from a simpler reason, because we are really facing a heavy urbanization and a very massive population growth. And it is said that by 2050, there will be 800 million cities. Cities which are growing faster than we can even perceive it. And we need a multidisciplinary team that can deal with uh, these issues and that can help build these cities. As a case study, I will uh, speak today uh, about one project in Riga, that is uh, public space in front of the uh, Riga castle, that is the beginning of the city. It's uh, things, uh, since 13th uh, century were transformed uh, maybe each 20 years until today. Uh, and today this um, space is actually in the periphery. It is just lawn and cut it by the bridge uh, in the north. It is very hard to de define in ourselves landscape diversity, what we call to be heterogeneous or diverse. Which is more diverse, yeah? The desert or the jungle, we cannot really 
define which is more diverse. The state was uh, controlling um, and deciding about uh, investments, funds, uh, going even to the design matters. Uh, and when the transformation happened, after the abrupt collapse of communist uh, regimes, special planning starts uh, happening at the local level. I work really on the local scale because uh, researchers know a lot about the drivers of uh, land abandonment at the global or national scale, but we don't know so much about local scales, if, if the same factors keep the same trends, how is the proportion uh, among them, uh, what's the importance, what's the rationality uh, behind uh, land abandonment. It's why I depicted the area which is about uh, 80 square kilometers uh, large. Next question. The topic is a visit of Karlin which is a historical industrial suburb of Prague. It was built in the 19th century behind the city walls, like a, one of the first developments in Prague. Then it changed to the Confidence City Quarter with housing and everything. And today it's also, also a modern rebuild. Also, I'd like to thank you very much. I think this is, uh, at least for me, um, and I hope for you, an interesting topic. I think the diversity of presentations and discussions we've had has been really good and I'm happy that we've had as much time for questions and answers as we've had. So thank you very much again.